Hello, in this video I'm going to explain all 19 different variable types in Unreal Engine in 12 minutes. In Unreal Engine, variables are used to store data. To create a variable in Unreal Engine, you can simply open up any blueprint, then in the left hand column there should be a tab called variables, you just click this add new variable button and this will allow you to create a new variable. And then in order to specify the variable type, just go here and then you can select the 19 different variable type options. This video is intended to be a resource, so whenever you need to know about a specific variable inside of Unreal Engine, feel free to come back to this video. I'll make sure that there are timestamps in the description of this video, so you can easily skip to what variable you want to learn about. With that being said, let's get into it. First up, we have the Boolean variable type, and it can only contain one of two different values, either true or false. It's one of the most simple variables to understand in Unreal Engine. To showcase an example, I've created a very simple blueprint of this cube, and it has a boolean variable called b red. If this variable is true, I make it so this cube will be the red color. However, if this variable is false, then I make it so it will be a white color. So this is the cube in the level, and you can see my reference to my boolean variable here. When I just check it, it can be true. When it's true, the cube will be red. And when I uncheck it, this variable will be false, and the cube will be white. The next variable type we have is the byte, and this can store a whole number between the values of 0 and 255. So right now I have my byte variable, and right now we can see the default value is 255. If say I try and make this a higher value, like 300, it won't let me, because the max value we can have of a byte is between 0 and 255. Next we have the integer variable, and this lets us store a whole number between the values of negative 2 billion all the way up to positive 2 billion. The integer 64 variable can store a whole number between the values of negative 9 quintillion and positive 9 quintillion. The float variable is used to store any number which is not whole. So for example, a number with a decimal. So in this float, I could type in 45.6 and it would let me store that number. Next up, we have the name variable. You'd use this when you want to name specific objects in your game that you want to identify. For example, maybe you want to name certain characters or objects in your game. The next variable type we have is the string. This is kind of similar to the name, although with the string we can perform manipulation functions on whatever is on the string. To showcase what I mean, um, I have this string variable and I can just drag up here and of course switch on string. So with this string, I'm basically going to do some manipulation to check to see if this string says the word cat or dog. If it says cat, then I want my game to print string meow. However, if this string says dog, then I want this to say the words woof. Right now I've set it to be cat. So if I just play my game, we can see it print strings meow. Although let's say I change this to be dog, then I go compile, and then I go close, then I go play. This will print string woof. And there's also a bunch of different ways that we can manipulate string data. We basically check to see if this is case sensitive. We can split the data in the string. So the main difference between the string and the name is we can perform manipulation functions on the string. We then have the text variable type, which is used to display text, which you want to show on your screen. To showcase this, I've created a very simple um, widget blueprint in Unreal Engine. This basically allows me to display widget elements on top of my screen. And I have this text, and I've made this a variable. And I make it so um, at the start of my game, then begin play, I create this widget. And here in this text, I can basically decide um, what I want it to show on my screen. I can just connect my text variable into here. And then I'm just going to make this a cake and write go compile. And I go play. We can see it says cake in the middle of the screen. So we use the text variable to display text that we want to show on our screen. Next, we have the vector variable. This variable contains three different float values one in the x, one in the y, and one in the z. So right now we can see the vector variable here is made up of an x float, a y float, and a z float. This is typically used to store the location of something or the scale of something, although it can be used to store the value of anything which has three different values. Next up, we have the rotator variable. This is also made up of three separate float values, although it's only meant to be used to store the specific rotation of an actor in a 3D space. Each value is meant to be in degrees, so each float value in the X, Y, and Z is meant to go up to a maximum value of 360 degrees to represent how you can rotate it. The transform variable is used to store the location, rotation, and scale of an object in a 3D space. Next up, we have a structure. A structure can hold multiple pieces of data of all different types, so it can be made up of any combination of different variables. For example, I have this structure variable, and if I just drag up here and I look for break, this structure variable is made up of health, a name, and this variable called do a backflip. 
So this is the structure that I have for enemies in my game. To create a structure is very easy. Just find somewhere in your project that you want to create the structure. And then you can just right click, go to blueprint and select structure, name your structure appropriately. So I'm just gonna call this inventory. And then I can open this up and you can basically decide the name of the variable in your structure and what variable it should have. So a structure can be made up of any combination of variables. Next up, we have enumerators. An enumeration is basically a list. It allows you to define a set of possible values for a variable. For example, I made this character creator project and I created an enumeration called male and female because this represented the two different genders that um, you could be in my character creator project. To create an enumerator is very simple. We just right click in some free space, give to a blueprint, then select enumeration, name it appropriately. As you can see, it says one, two, three, because an enumerator is kind of like a list. And I can just go add enumerator and I can basically specify and define uh, what I want each list to say. So maybe I can make this say A, and the next one I can make it say B, and then the next one I can make it say C. I'll save this. I'll just call this my um, alphabet. And here under the variable type, I'm just going to look for the alphabet. And in this um, variable, we can see I can define A, B, or C. And you can do different things. So if I just wrap up here and look for switch on alphabet, depending on what this variable is, I could do different things. Next up, we have the interface variable. The interface variable can basically store a reference to an interface asset. If you didn't know what an interface asset is, I made a whole video about how to set up and use interfaces. I'll make sure a link to that video appears somewhere on the screen now. Check it out if you want a more in detail explanation about interfaces. Although just so that you can get a quick understanding, an interface is basically a collection of empty functions that only have a name, input, and or outputs. Next up, we have the class variable. This basically stores a reference to a blueprint. So there's this common node in Unreal Engine called spawn actor from class. And this basically allows us to spawn any actor in our game. So for example, I have this third person character, I have this BP cube, and with the spawn actor from class, I can basically spawn any actor. Next up, we have the object variable. I've not actually shown it on the screen, although an object variable will basically allow us to store a reference to a specific instance of a blueprint. So right now I have this spawn actor from class node. If say I just typed in the actor I want to spawn, so let's say I want to spawn a third person character. If I right click on this and I permit this to a variable, this is an example of an object variable as it allows me to reference a specific instance of an object. So this object variable will let me access the specific third person character actor that I spawned with this node. There are also some different ways that we can basically change variables. So right now, when you create a variable in Unreal Engine, it will normally be a single instance, although we can change the variables to be an array. An array can basically hold multiple instances of the same variable. So if I just compile this, I can add multiple elements to this array. So it's got element zero, one, two, and three, and I can add more and more. Maybe in this first array element, I can make this say cat, then dog, and then fish, and then donkey. And when you drag in a variable and it's an array, you need to get or set a specific instance of that array. For this example variable, if say I wanted to access on the second line, I just drag up here and I'll forget a copy and then if I typed in two, this would basically allow me to access um, the number two in my array. Array start counting from the number zero. The other way we can basically manipulate variables is by making them a set. A set is kind of similar to an array in that it allows you to basically store a bunch of different variables within one. Although there are few key differences, it does not allow duplicate values. So for my first value, if I make it cat and then I add another element, if I try and name this cat, because it's a set, it doesn't allow me to do this. With sets, it does not support Boolean text or rotator data types. So if I try to make this a Boolean, whilst this is a set, it won't let me. So if I go compile, I don't have the option to make this a set, although I can with the other variable types. And then we have the map. A map basically allows you to store two pairs of data. Each pair consists of two values that can be of the same or different data types. So an example of where you could use a map is like in an inventory system. So if I just compile this and then I go add new element, maybe one of the items in the inventory is a potion. 
and I want to track that um, the player has got five potions and then maybe my player character has some apples and maybe uh, they have three apples. With maps, the column on the left is typically referred to as keys and the column on the right is typically referred to as values. So a map is made up of two parts, keys and values. And for the keys, you can't have duplicate keys. So if I try and add an element and I try and call this potion, it won't let me. With a map, the most common node you're probably going to use is going to be the add node. If I just drag up here and I look for add, this will allow me to change the value in the map. Despite the name being called add, it actually doesn't add a value to the map. So let's say I have my potions. Here, if I typed in potion, and then let's say I typed in six, this node would actually replace the amount of potions that I have in my map with six. If say I actually wanted to add one more element onto my potion, what I need to do is I just need to drag up here and look for the find node. And then I find my potion. And then I'd want to drag up here and look for add. And I want this one under operators. And then I need to add one. And then that would make it so I increase the value in my map for one. Another common node you'll probably use with the map is going to be the contains. So I look for contains. Maybe you want to see if your map has, for example, you want to check to see if the player character has some potions. And this will basically give you a boolean and let you know if it's true or false, whether um, you have some potions in your map. And maps can be made up of any single variable type. So that's every single variable type in Unreal Engine explained. If you want to learn even more about Unreal Engine, I encourage you to check out my completely free Unreal Engine beginner course. It covers all of the essentials about Unreal Engine that I think everyone should know. And if you also want to take your Unreal Engine learning further, make sure to check out my website. There'll be a link to it in the description of this video. With that said, bye, and I'll see you guys in the next one.